Thank you all. Finance committee meeting, meeting virtually uh, as we are able to do due to the governor's um, allowing that. Um, I don't have the great speech that Peg has before the city council. I should probably get that. Um, we have a number of things on the agenda. I just have to ask you, Peg, I wasn't at the September 29th meeting. Was minutes done for that? You know, I don't, did we? Did I do it? Okay. Well, yes, I did. Do Dan. Motions. <laughs> yes, yes, I have it. Okay. Yeah, you send that uh, motion to accept the, more of the minutes for September 29th. Second. We have a motion to accept the minutes of September 29th. Councilor Gomez. Aye. Councilor Connor. Aye. Councilor Rist abstains. Thank you. Uh, first item on, oh, Mayor, do you have anything other than what's on the agenda? No. All right, thank you. Randy, I asked you here for the first item, which was the uh, classifications. Um, normally, we kind of get a letter from the, uh, you had asked for the November 3rd um, public hearing, which we did set. So I'd like you to send us whatever, or the Board of Assessors should send us a letter indicating even if there are no changes, and I'm going to ask you that right now. Are there any changes from the last year with regard to classifications? Uh, you're muted, Randy. There's definitely going to be some changes. I anticipate about a 5% increase in values. Well, what but, I'm talking about is classifications, like uh, open space and all those classifications we have. Oh, no. We're, uh, as far as how we are classifying uh, the, the, the parcels here, there will be no change. Everything is going to stay the same. All right. And um, we're not going to split the rate between commercial and residential? Um, I would assume that we are not going to. That's really not. I, I can make a recommendation, but it's really the council's responsibility on that. But I am not going to recommend that we split the tax rate at this time. And the board usually recommends that, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, exactly. So me, I'm speaking, I guess, sort of for the board. OK, so <laughs> one question I have. If we were to do that, my understanding, and, and I should know this because I've been on the council a long time, but that doesn't mean I, I remember, we don't have a large footprint of commercial property. So if we were to split the rate in order to affect residential property, we would have to raise the business or commercial rate pretty high in order to reduce the other rate because we still have to collect a certain amount of taxes. Am I correct in that? Yes. So it'd have to be pretty high. So if, if, for instance, we're at 16 cents per thousand, in order to get 15 cents, we'd have to go up maybe to 20 cents or something like that. I mean, we're talking about a major increase in commercial uh, taxes if we were to split the rate. It would definitely be a big impact on the commercial. Well, depending on where we, we decided to go with the split, um, but usually, yes, you're putting more of the burden on the commercial. We have about a 88 to a 12%, so 88% is residential and about 12% is commercial, personal property and industrial. Um, okay, so I think that's important information for the council to understand because um, we wanna make sure we maintain that. We've always, in my whole history on the council, we've never split that rate, so. Um, since the classifications aren't changing and since the rate's not changing, do we want to vote on this tonight, uh, counselors, or do you have any questions for Randy? Um, I, I don't, I, I would like to see the, the particulars in front of us. Um, I, you okay, know, I don't can, know what, what specifically, Dan, are we voting on? All right. I, I think you made a good point. Randy, can you send us a letter from the board or from yourself indicating that you're recommending uh, the, cl the, the classifications be kept the same and then list them all. You can look at the letter we got last year. It's, it's going to duplicate it. And also that we're not splitting the rate. Um, sure. And then if you can send that to the full council, um, hopefully before, uh, well, before the November 3rd meeting. So if you could send that to Barbara, she can put it in the package and then we'll vote on it at our next finance meeting. Okay, so I'm I'm putting this letter to the finance committee, not the city council. No, put it to the full council. To the full council, okay. Right. 
Uh, Nicole, you have your hand up. Nicole. Hi. Um, I'm. I guess I have um. Uh, uh, two questions. Um, would I? I'd like the finance committee um to consider uh to take the assessor and the board of assessors at their word that there will not be any changes tonight's vote's not about an increase of the value um but just the structure of our taxes not being a split rate um well, and it's it's, public hearing why do you need that the public hearing is until november 3rd we can vote on it at our next finance meeting which is going to be the 29th or something yeah, like that. 20th and does that interfere with any timeline randy with when we have to get that no you wanted november 3rd right so we're 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 really still putting everything together and what i'm trying to do is get out and complete all the inspections which has to do with our growth so once all the inspections are done and everything has been input then our growth is ready then we'll be you know, making adjustments. I already have info off to the consultant that helps us with uh, the calculation of those values. And that's where I had that. I think that we're probably gonna see about a 5% increase in values. But um, you know, so we do have things in the hopper, but not everything is ready. And I'm hoping because we have you know, the unknown of once we are ready and have our information ready to put through to the state, how long is there gonna be the turnaround from the state? Well, I understand that, but we're only voting on the classification and that we're not splitting the rate. Right. All of that is up to you guys. We're not voting on anything else. So uh, if you get us that that simple letter that we always get, that you know, listing each one of the classifications and the fact that the Board of Assessors does not recommend a split tax rate, that's all we need. And okay. we'll vote on it at the next meeting, but we get that every year. Every year since I've been a counselor, it's been the same. You didn't you didn't add any discounts or anything like that. So, if you find that in the in the file, you could probably uh, cut and paste. I, I, I I'm the board, but I'm pretty sure that's what that's all we need. The values and all of that, we don't vote on. That's something that you take up with the board and with the mayor, etc. Understood. Yeah, this is my first time going through this process in East Hampton. I got info from Barb that I should be getting this letter of recommendation back to her, which I did. But then we had a meeting this week and Peter actually filled me in on some of the other things that we really need to reach out to this committee. And that's why I was prepared to be at this meeting tonight. And um, you know, another thing that I wanted to bring up and so I can take care of that letter and get it over to you. I should be able to find it or just create my own from the information that you're telling me. But another thing that I do, and I believe that you might uh, be familiar with this, what I, I have a PowerPoint presentation that I like to put together for the council. And it's about different tax rates or comparisons. Uh, and what I wanted to do is ask the finance committee if they're, you, you know, it's a, co a comparison. And this is like to eight other towns. I, I was comparing. I think that would be other. extremely valuable. What I recommend is your letter and that PowerPoint be put in the packet for the next council meeting, which is due next, this Thursday, I guess. Okay. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, well, if, that that if that's not that possible, I think uh, President Conniff could allow it to happen on Monday. Yeah. Okay, but if you get it into the packet, then the full council is reading that. And then at the finance committee meeting, we can vote to accept it and understand that. And then at the presentation on November 3rd, you're going to have an opportunity to do that PowerPoint. Okay. And, and so, and that's to the full council. Understood. And, and so part of what I'm trying to ask here is, um, you know, when I was uh, contemplating employment, I tried to look and see whatever, if I was going to do something like this, what other towns would I use to compare East Hampton to? So in Lenox, there are a lot that were close and that were similar in size and value. Um, when I looked at things here, I saw East Hampton, South Hadley, Northampton and Greenfield were really the closest ones that had a close comparison uh, in size and, and value. 
So I didn't know if the council had any preferences or another town or city that they would like put into the comparison besides the ones I've mentioned, South Hadley, Northampton, and Greenfield. I think the comparison on population and maybe residential versus commercial would be if they are compatible, they make, they make sense. So you know better than us what, what are compatible towns. I know Northampton is bigger. Um, and I know Holyoke has a split rate and it's huge for commercial. So I don't know, whatever you feel would be a valid comparison with regard to how commercial and, and residential property is. Okay, is, uh, I'll do some more research and take those that I have. And then also, um, uh, would you be opposed to have something that was comparable, but not necessarily local? So maybe something that was out east or, or, or more eastward, but similar in size and value uh, to our towns, you know, in population. And, and you know, there, there's different ways I could look at it, population or uh, a budget or, um, you know, overall value. I always look at, you know, the, yeah, whatever works for you. But uh, Peg and Omar, do you have any uh, thoughts on this? I think compatible towns is better. I, I, I do know that Barbara has done a variety of analysis against other communities and on various and sundry different topics for years. And she picks sometimes ones that she as a city clerk have similar makeups for whatever she's comparing. She might be someone you just wanna run past. I feel like there's a couple that are in the Northwest corner and some that are a little more central that she uses sometimes to get a broader picture. So she may have some thoughts on that actually. Perfect, thanks. And that's really what I was looking for, some uh, additional information uh, on what might be most appropriate for East Hampton. So Barb will be a good resource and I'll talk to her about that. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna give you till Monday. President Conniff will amend the uh, agenda, but Monday's the deadline because we need to get it in 48 hours before, I hope, okay? I, I will definitely- If you get it tomorrow, help. great. You get it, you're gonna bring it, you're gonna send it to Barbara, okay? And Peg, if you would just let Barbara know, we may be having an amended agenda for Monday. Yep. Thank you, Randy. That's all we need. No problem. I'll definitely have a lot. I'll be need you back at the next finance committee meeting. All right. Not a problem. Just let me know. Okay. Thanks, Randy. All right. Thank you. Uh, counselors, I'm going to jump to uh, Mr. Norris because his particular item is up for the next council meeting. So we have before us, Chris, if you'd get on, please. We have before us a new ambulance and I read all the documentation. I was disturbed to see that we might lose that, that cost because it was September 30th. Can you update us on whether we're saving any money by doing these at once still? Yes, and good afternoon, uh, everyone. Thank you for uh, having me here uh, this afternoon. So uh, what's before you is the purchase, the request for a purchase of a second ambulance. Uh, very briefly, as all of you are well aware, uh, last year we applied for a federal grant in the amount of $275,000 that was approved. We did that match uh, last week at council. When we reached out to the vendor after we were awarded the grant, we started the conversation with them about leveraging uh, purchasing two at the same time and what cost savings that would bring to the city. And going back and forth with them, we're looking at a cost savings of over $30,000. And in particular, it was the timeline that we were really looking at and concerned at was September 30th um, to get these ordered. Um, we had uh, some delays in some of the paperwork. We reached out to the company. They're holding that price for us to answer your question, Councilor Rist. Um, so the prices that were put forward to you are still true and accurate. And basically, this request would replace a 2013 ambulance with over 101,000 miles on it. Uh, as a reminder, East Hampton Fire has three ambulances. They're all licensed at the paramedic level. When we did the grant, we put in to have the oldest one replaced, which is a 2010 with a 2000 patient body on it. It was, um, 
it was remounted with a new cabin chassis in 2010. When I came into the city a year and a half ago and spoke to the citywide mechanic, Denny, Dennis Ruthier, about replacing the ambulances, he said if he had his way, he'd replace the 2013 first. What I was told when that was delivered, the engine actually blew the day they delivered it. And since then, it's been problematic to the point where prior to my tenure and even to today, that is the last one out the door based on mechanical and operational issues that have been ongoing since day one. So that's, that's the proposal before you is to leverage the purchase of two ambulances at the same time um, to kind of dovetail off the federal grant for $275,000 and replace two ambulances that have over 100,000 miles on each of these. Okay, I, I, I love it that we can still save the 30 grand. Um, that's real money and it's worth it, especially when you say that if we don't, it sounds like if we don't replace this uh, ambulance, we may lose it anyway, because, or you're putting a lot of money into maintenance that that 30,000 will be used up pretty fast. So uh, I'm certainly in favor of this. I'm glad the mayor's using um, the fund she's using to support it, but I'll turn it over to my other counselors for questions. Peg or Omar? You know, I don't, I think we talked about this a few weeks ago when the other ambulance request had come up and it was kind of framed as if we get two, we get a discount, um, all of that. So I don't think I have any, if you could just tell me again, Chief, how many miles are on that one? Uh, that one has over 101,000 miles on it. Okay. Other than that, I don't have any additional questions. Omar? Thank you. Yeah, I, I always do have questions, right? Uh, that's that's no that's no new. Um, first, I think this is amazing. If we can save some money buying two brand new ambulance for the for the safety of the community, I, I'm in. But I still have some questions. The first one is, uh, we now have we have three ambulances. If we gonna have new two new ambulances, which one are we gonna stay with three ambulances and we're gonna keep one? Which one we're gonna keep? And um, the new ambulance. The, the we're going to get both. None of them are coming with structures, anything, equipment inside. So we're going to replace the equipment inside, move everyone from the two uh, old ambulance to the new ambulance. And uh, that's my two questions for now. So let me answer the last part of that question first in terms of equipment. Um, there's two different philosophies out there. One, the first one is when you buy a new ambulance, you purchase it with all the new equipment. And then obviously the second philosophy is you transfer the current equipment over to the new ambulance. The size of East Hampton and our call volume, I strongly believe that you're better off taking the current equipment and transferring all of that, all of that over to the new ambulance. The reason for that, if you start to stagger and purchase equipment along with ambulances, because we jump back and forth on all different vehicles on the same day, you don't want three different monitors on three different ambulances that leads to uh, patient care er errors and issues. So you wanna keep all that consistent. So to answer your question, all the equipment, the, the monitors, the stretchers, the power load systems, we transfer it over. It'll just be the vehicle is the cost that's being requested. Um, Can I and, follow up? Yep. What you're saying is all of your paramedics use the same equipment regardless of what ambulance they go out on. Which that makes is sense to me so it also seems to say that if you're going to replace the monitors, you're going to replace three of them because you want the same monitor to be trained on all of your paramedics. Makes a lot of sense. I like that. Yeah. And quickly using that as an example, the newest monitors are LP20s. We have, L we have three LP15s. I don't want to buy two ambulances that are going to have LP20s and then one ambulance with an LP15 that leads to patient care issues and therapy issues. You want, you want to keep that consistency. So yes, you want to replace all those at the same time. Thank you. And then Councillor Gomez, the first part to your question, the vehicle that's going to remain, it's a 2018. The one thing just to note for the record and for all the counselors is right now, that vehicle has about 70,000 miles on it. Uh, if approved by the full council to purchase the second ambulance, it's not like you're going to a car dealership and buying it right off the lot that day. 
it's going to take anywhere from eight to 12 months. So my point is, by the time these two ambulances arrive, that newest ambulance to 2018 is going to have about 85,000 miles on it. <laughs> um, anytime you're over 100,000 with a vehicle of this type, you need to look at getting those replaced. So that's just more uh, shows the criticality of getting these two vehicles replaced. So we'd have a 2018 with about 85,000 miles on it. Tentatively, again, if approved, two new ambulances. We would rotate those through the first year. We'd alternate them out the door. While they're under warranty and you're still kind of breaking them in, you want to rotate them. And then after that first year, you would start having one of the two going out the door first on a regular basis. So you start to offset the miles over the years. Makes sense. Hey, I saw your hand up. Yeah, I just want to ask, Chief, have you seen or do you track seeing your spreadsheets as I know you make? You probably do. But do you track the impact of our contract with, what is it, Southampton? West, West Hampton. Hampton. West Hampton um, in terms of additional use on our ambulances than would otherwise happen if we were just supporting East Hampton? If you're, def so the contract is with, with, with West Hampton. Mm -hmm. And if you define additional use as call volume, then yes. And so miles. For, so, so for example, last year we went to West Hampton 89 times and we transported 69 patients out of there. And the question always is, well, what happened to the other 20 calls? We went out there 89 total times, 20 of those were refusals that patients were not transported. Um, on the average out to West Hampton, and by the way, we went to West Hampton twice today already, um, just as a side note. Um, but on average out there, you're going about 11 and a half miles just out there to West Hampton alone. And then the last component to that is in terms of our data collection is Bay State Medical Center. Um, I put in the memo, not only going to West Hampton a lot, but the calls we're seeing are more severe. And that's requiring us to take those patients to a level one trauma center at Bay State Medical Center in Springfield, which is longer distance traveled as well as longer time out of service. Um, so that those two reasons are, again, one of the reasons the mileage on these units are going up very fast. Okay, thank you. Omar. So it's fair to say that we put like around 25,000 mile, uh, 25,000 miles a year per ambulance? The, the frontline ambulance A1 averages between 20 and 25,000 a year. So that means that probably in four years, we have to replace two new ambulance again. My recommendation always based on the industry standards in a city of East Hampton and their call volume, you wanna get a rotation to get ambulances replaced every four years. Okay. And, and along those same lines, again, not to, just to explain it to the public is, Two things. Number one, obviously, we understand the importance of the critical service these vehicles provide in terms of life safety, but also this is also a reinvestment in a service that brings in over what I'm going to tell you this year, the first time in East Hampton, we're going to bring in over a million dollars. Um, when you look at the different trends over the past few years, East Hampton has brought in on average around $680,000. We made some operational changes and last year we brought in $915,000 last fiscal year. That money is based off of the contract with West Hampton, the patients we transported, and also the Medicare CPE program. Collectively, that brought in 915. Based on some ongoing changes and some improvements in the system, come June 30th, I'm confident to tell you we're going to be at about a million dollars this year. Wow. So these vehicles contribute to that level of service and also that reinvestment for revenue coming into the general fund. Excellent. Okay, just one more question. And that's it, I promise. This is your third <laughs> one more question. Yes, right I know, I know. This is, <laughs> this is the last one for now. Um, the, the, the new ambulance they're coming to the market, is anyone, uh, any company they have fuel efficiency? I know it's, I'm not talking about hybrid, but it's safe more uh, fuel than a couple of years ago, or we, are not, we don't have any improvement yet in that particular area. 
I, I don't, I apologize. I don't have any definitive data right now in terms of actual fuel efficiencies. Um, anecdotally, I can tell you that a 2010 and 2013, um, those are going to use more fuel than the newer ones in the, in the markets right now. Um, both of these vehicles that we're purchasing um, are going to be gas. They will not be mm -hmm. diesel. And again, that was recommended by Dennis Ruthier, who we had purposely sit on our ambulance committee for specification design. And diesel is much dirtier than gasoline. It's dirtier, it's more expensive, and we still get the power and the torque needed for these vehicles. Both of them will be four-wheel drive, and it will provide that consistent operational platform. Again, these, these personnel, the firefighters and paramedics, they're jumping back and forth between all of these vehicles. This will provide that consistency with these vehicles. They're going to be designed just like A1, as I mentioned earlier. Okay. Anything else? Uh, Mayor, do you have anything you want to add? I okay. guess that's a no. <laughs> okay. Uh, can I have a motion uh, to uh, send to the um, Mo um, Council okay. approval of $298,872 to be coming, come from cannabis stabilization for a new FY22 new ambulance? So moved. Second. We have a motion on the floor for the new ambulance. Do we have any further discussion? Hearing none, Councilor Gomez? Aye. Councilor Khan? Aye. And Councilor Riss says aye. Chris, this is up next week. We I'll want to there. get it done so you can order it immediately. I'll be there and thank you very much. If there's any questions that come up before then, please reach out. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Chris. I, I wanted to confirm with Councilor Khan if we have a six o'clock deadline for Jeff. Yep. Okay, then uh, let's take Jeff next so that uh, we can get him done. He can prep for his next meeting. We have a six o'clock deadline for this Zoom. So, right. and uh, yeah. if we don't get to the 6,000, Jeff's uh, request, the planning department request, and the $6,000 request are up for November 3rd. So, we, we can go over them again if we have to. Okay. So Jeff, you're up, explain your request. It looks like uh, I know how much the planning department has done in all of the cannabis licensing. So this makes sense to me, but go ahead and uh, state your case. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, no, I appreciate that. I mean, this is a, a, a bit of time coming. Um, yeah, I really wanted to thank Hadel for uh, spending a fair amount of time with me to work this out. Um, you know. Looking back over the past four years, um, the planning department ha and, and it has really just been focused on the city planner position, um, has been just incredibly involved in formulating the, the, the cannabis industry that we have. Um, I, I really believe that the mayor has a lot of time and effort in, in this um, as well, in terms of talking to applicants and bringing them in, but I would say that without the planning department's involvement, we would not have the industry that we have today. Um, so, you know, whether it's the early stages of um, working through host community agreements um, and the creation of the zoning amendments that set us up, uh, you know, in 2018 with the regulations that allowed us to accept um, the industry in East Hampton um, all the way through, you know, hours and hours and hours of the public hearings uh, for all the each of the special permits that have been granted. And, you know, the, 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 the thing that, you know, goes unseen most of the time is that it's not just the hours of the public hearing, it's the hours of consultation before, um, before even just an applicant is ready. Um, so, so while we have five, you know, operating retail dispensaries, I, I would guess that we've consulted with at least 12 different kind of entities along the way. And that's time I'll never get back um, when, they, when they walk away or, or don't pursue, a, you know, anything in East Hampton, all the way through bringing them on board, um, walking them and assisting, then, then, you know, then we're assisting other departments in getting them open. And all those things. And I think um, what I'm trying to do is acknowledge the, the work of the city planner position in cannabis and um, take, take some of that revenue and use it for the planner's salary. 
Um, so I wanted to be really careful in my cover letter to say that this is not a raise um, and this is not an increase in my salary. This is um, not uncommon for the planning department to have positions that are full time, but are made up of different funding sources. And so my thinking is that, and with the mayor's support, that this is this is being creative. This is thinking outside the box. This is a revenue source that can be used for this purpose um, in the time of budget constraints. You know, um, the irony is that we're constraining budgets, but the level of activities are increasing. Uh, people's expectations are high, and um, so this is this is me looking outside the box to to use these revenue sources that we have um, for this purpose. Um, a couple of quick things I, I did wanna add is that um, it's the, the general fund um, portion that will be saved is, you know, the desire is to shift that to the conservation agent and that will allow that position to be full-time. Um, I've articulated that need in the past three budget narratives that you know we we did fund you know the assistant planner who is taking on all the permitting uh, for the planning board and ZBA, and I have articulated over the years that the conservation agent was the next um, position to go from part time to full time, and what that will enable us to do is to continue to apply for other grants that we're currently not applying for today. Um, the 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 issues related to climate change, sustainability, um, getting people outdoors, trails are all things that with, you know, other towns have the full-time conservation agent and that's work that they would do. So um, for the nominal requests, you know, the, the $34,000 goes and funds part of my salary as the planner position, but that general fund um, money can make the agent position full-time as well. So, um, I, I, the other statement I think in case there's questions is that I, I realize that this is not a permanent shift. This is to capture that revenue now. And then as budgets um, are increased over time and we're allowed to then increase budgets again, the idea is that the general fund revenues will increase back and this, this will be kind of removed as a funding source as we go over the next couple of years. So it's really important to me to under, have everyone understand that this is not a raise um, this is not an increase in my salary, but it's it's repositioning the funding source um, that pays for for uh, my work. Um, the other part of it is sixty thousand dollars for uh, professional services. So this is really critical for the planning department to have access to some money to pursue you know other studies. We we need to continue to evaluate the dispensaries and cultivation sites and understand their impacts, water usage, electrical usage, traffic uh, impacts, pedestrian safety, you know, improvements. And so we need to have access to some of this money to, to, to start funding that. And I will say that the planning department does want to use this money for other general planning purposes as well. Um, one example of a cannabis study that has been funded is the looking at Parsons Ferry intersection. So, you know, just for a reference point, just to get designs and evaluate the intersection, you know, that's $46,000. So asking for 60, you know, I'd be very mindful of how that won't get very far, but I think there's smaller studies that can be done with that amount of money. And then the last is the $3,000 to pay for the Pioneer Valley Planning uh, Commission's assessment to the whole city. And so that was a, an item that was removed from the planning department budget last year. And this is, this is a, a good fit to kind of fill that. So I think with the, that information, I'll have, I'm happy to answer some questions. Well, I just want to say of all the bar departments that are impacted by the cannabis um, explosion, your department is the, work, is, the, is the largest. And I, I have no problem. And I don't know if the mayor can address this, but if we maintain cannabis stabilization or cannabis impact funds to support the planning department from now on. Uh, I have no problem with that because we've done that. We, we are making up for the time he's done and I'm sure there'll be more cannabis uh, stuff going forward. So Mayor, is this something that you could think of using uh, in a more permanent basis? Or as Jeff said, you expect that it'll go away over time because the budgets will increase? I was just curious about that because 
this council has no problem with using cannabis impact funds this way. Um, yeah, uh, uh, Councillor Riss, you've just made uh, Jeff's life for probably the next five years with the statement, but he knows the answer, no. Um, it has to be appropriated, you know, which requires, you know, yours, your, your approval. That, that said, uh, you will definitely be seeing requests out of the planning department and a lot of that will be to supplement the capacity of the department. Um, the money we're using here, the HCA close community agreement, those fees, the impact fee that we collect will diminish over time. Um, and each dispensary that is opened only pays those fees um, for five years and then they go away. So it's not forever money. Uh, I would also expect um, you know, I mean, just the, the 3% of sales, we're going to see some leveling off of the market. So the banner year from ENSA, um, I, I don't think is an indication of ENSA's impact fee plus, 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 um, but we'll, we'll see some leveling out. And we are now, I mean, that said, every dollar is important. Um, and this is, you know, this is in pennies, but as far as planning, uh, and, I, you know, I've said it before, the impact of cannabis on our city um, hasn't exactly been what we thought it was going to be as far as like increased criminal activity um, and, and whatnot and increased EMS. There's an impact. Some of it is for all of the oversight that those businesses, the those two part departments have to be um and some planning as well uh, but you know I, I think that goes to jeff's point where we we need to look at the impacts of of traffic road wear additional stress on water and sewer um i think that when we take a close look at our housing market um everybody has seen growth in surrounding but um it's relatively easy to see what our growth is and and compare it um, historically and add a little bit of that cannabis um, uptick in it. I don't think that cannabis is, you know, uh, let's say 3% of the 5% we just heard, but I think that there's, um, yeah. So I, I think that it's, um, it's a great use. It's use that we didn't expect as, we didn't expect as one that's ongoing, you'll see more um, requests for appropriation. And I, I don't like to um, make uh, permanent promises for money that has to be appropriated every time we want some. So, sorry, Jeff. <laughs> I have no other questions, Councilor Connor. I don't, I, you know, I, uh, I understand the, the plan for this. I know the, the burden that, if you want to call it a burden that the planning department has been dealing with with cannabis i mean being the the second city in the state to go through this there was a lot of runway of planning yeah. and work that took away from a lot of other things that um the planning department does so um i'm any way that we can get creative with these funds and appropriate them in a way that funnels the money to departments to be able to use them for the greater good of the community. I think planning is one of the top contenders for that. So I, I'm, I'm pleased that we got creative and that Jeff can get some additional funding to do some of these other things that he wants to do. So no questions, just kudos. Omar? I don't have any question. I just want to say that thank you, Jeff. I think your explanation about the salary makes uh, completely sense, not just to us, to the public, um, because at the end it, it's people's money, right? Um, and uh, we just saw it. We just approved over uh, $200,000 from cannabis for buying an ambulance, because cannabis is not just um, hit the, 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 uh, the planning department. It hit all the departments, and I think the money is, is for that. And I'm really pleased that we are using it for the right cause. Excellent. 
I just want to add one more, uh, uh, Mayor, I don't know if you want to add, I just wanted to add that, you know, I do want to acknowledge that this is an appropriation request for this fiscal year that we're in. You know, in my conversations with Hadel, the plan is for next fiscal year to have this, you know, the same general amount to be budgeted into my budget, um, but using the same source. So that'll go on at least, you know, my projection, you know, and the mayor and I have talked about this, so, so what the mayor said is not a yeah. surprise. I mean, I, I totally understand. And that's why I said, this is not a permanent projection. Um, I think three to four years, and, and each time in theory, maybe maybe um, three to four years is what I would expect. And then for this year and next year, it'd probably be about the same amount. So the request is 34,000. And then those last two years, it should continue to decrease in amount. And it, it should be matched by the, the, my, my expectation is that at some point our budgets will be allowed to increase and I will be making, I'll be filling this back in. Um, so the projection is that this amount will decrease over the next four years to a point where it's not necessary. And I think that kind of aligns with what the mayor was saying that these are not permanent you know, income sources. So I was really cognizant of that in, in discussions with the mayor. I did want to just say that this will come back in next year's budget and probably the, the following two. So I just want to be open and transparent that this is this is probably for four years is the idea. Um, and then we'll wean off of the funding source and build back the general fund. Did you want to say something, Nicole? Yeah, I mean, I just want to also, um, you know, when you're talking about being creative and an unexpected impact is, you know, the, the amount of cannabis that the planning, like cannabis related um, issues that the, the planning department, you know, had to take, um, what do I want to say? It impacted, it wasn't just that it impacted um, the city and getting cannabis facilities opened or not open, but it also presented an opportunity cost. So there were grants and initiatives that we didn't pursue because we did not have the capacity. And if we had, or what we thought we was capacity, we held back because cannabis, especially in the beginning, those regulations were so nebulous, we weren't sure what was coming at us and what additional work we'd have to do. So I wanna also, Jeff is right about, you know, seeing that in the line item, but also the opportunity cost um, was, it was, and actually it continues to be much deeper and wider than, than we thought. Well, also I wanted to say the growth of the city is dependent on development in many ways and conservation agent being full-time would reduce the delay in the process, I imagine. So I think that's a good mm -hmm. thing too. So kudos. This is an excellent way of, of pursuing this. Any further discussion on this? Uh, I just want to know, and I'm pretty sure Jen said at the last meeting, uh, at the full city council meeting, after this appropriation, how much is how much is we going to have the uh, as a balance? Or is it Something be like 800, uh, Jen, do you have that figure? After we do these two, the ambulance and the uh, 97,000. Hello, Jen. I think she's I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I just couldn't find my mute button. Um, <laughs> I'll let, give me. Uh, I think I. You gave it to me. I can probably tell you. Yeah, I know. I just didn't have it. In front uh, of cannabis me. stabilization currently has one million two hundred ninety-two thousand six hundred eighty-nine. So if you subtract whatever we're doing now, looks like we're under a million or something. Like yeah, I think I think it, something. Yeah, I think it, I think it was eight hundred after this, and then yeah, I think it was eight hundred thousand. Okay. Sixty. It's eight thirty-seven. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Miss Numbers. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, I'd like a a motion to approve ninety-seven thousand dollars to be transferred from the cannabis stabilization account to the various areas listed on the appropriation, planner full-time regular, 34, planner professional service, 60,000, and planner PV, PVPC assessment, 3,000. So move. Second. We have a motion before us to approve $97,000. Do we have any further discussion? Hearing none, Councilor Gomez. Aye. Councilor Conniff. Aye. And Councilor Riss says aye. 
Now this will be up, Jeff, for the November 3rd meeting. Okay. It's a quarter to six. Uh, I did want to ask before we went into the, because maybe we should wait on the 6,000 for the next meeting, because again, that's not until November 3rd. Hadel, uh, would you be able to provide us, I had hoped for a quarterly report on the city's fiscal status, you know, used to give those uh, for the next meeting on the 29th. Are, uh, are we income looking revenue for, and how our expenses are doing. Um, are we looking for as of September 30th? Well, no, whatever is current for you, whatever um, is not just to see the trends, see where we are, because we want to do that quarterly. Yeah. The first quarter was July, August, September. So I don't know if you'd have it or counselors, maybe we can wait until November. What's more practical for you, uh, Hadel? Um, I think I can make it work for 27th, um, but I would like is to- Is it 27th, uh, Peg? What's the next? What are we meeting? talking about? The next city council next... meeting is the 20th. No. Then... No, the next <laughs> finance meeting. 27th, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, that's what we were talking about. Okay, so um, I would, I have to coordinate with um, treasurer's office to see how many um, batches are still outstanding to po to be posted. Um, if I can't make it the quarterly one, I can definitely give you as of August. Well, hearing this, I'm thinking let's do a quarterly. Let's do it in the first meeting in November. Gives okay. you more time to get it together. It's so, yes. okay, I'll, that's what I needed yeah. to know. Yeah, okay. All right, Peg, it's uh, 546. Do we want to take up the 6,000 now? I don't know how, comp it says to fix the building department budget and it's interdepartmental. So, Hadel, in when you say fix, is this a big story that will take 10 minutes or is it fairly easy? It's, uh, basically what happened with this whole budget, there was, um, uh, I was, uh, on the basis of the information given to me, um, there was a payroll obligation which was taken out from well, when we did the original budget. Mm -hmm. um, so that plus another additional um, Jim Fisher who came on board as an interim or he's doing inspections on uh, per per inspection basis versus a set salary or monthly stipend, that changed the budget. And then when we were looking into offering uh, for the new building commissioner, it came down to the point where we can't even meet the step one rate to offer to the new building inspector. So with respect to what we are offering, we offer to new building inspector and what we have in the budget to meet the, the requirements through the fiscal year, we are short by $6,000. And since it's a one-time fix, it's not like, um, and our free cash is still not certified. I submitted my balance sheet today, um, but we needed that, uh, this appropriation to be in place uh, before we even make an offer to the new building inspector. So I have recommended to use reserve funds. Ooh, I wish I knew that. Does this mean we can't hire the building commissioner until we've approved this November 3rd? No, it's not that. Uh, it's more so that we needed to put this in so it doesn't not fall through the cracks. And at the end of the fiscal year, we oh, are I not see. running into the def uh, departmental deficit. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, that makes total sense to me. I think that's, this is easy. Omar, do you have any questions? Uh, so this is basically to fix the building commissioner's office, the building inspection office. Yes. In that budget. Yes. I have no further questions. We can we can vote on this if if you want. Why don't we? Uh, I need a motion to approve. Let me find it. Six thousand dollars to be transferred from the reserve fund to the building FT permanent position of six thousand dollars. So moved. Second. We have a motion before us to transfer six thousand dollars from the reserve fund to the building. Uh, Inspection office of salary line. Do we have any further discussion? Hearing none, Councilor Gomez. Aye. Councilor Connors. Aye. Councilor Riss says aye. So this doesn't come up. Uh, you'll probably need to be there for the November 3rd meeting, Hato. Okay. And the quarterly report will put that for the November 10th meeting, finance meeting. Okay. Anything yep. else, Councilors? Nope. Yep. 
Then I'll take a motion to adjourn. To adjourn. Second. We have a motion to adjourn. Councilor Gomez. Aye. Councilor Ganeth. Aye. And Councilor Riff says aye. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Bye. See you later. Bye-bye.